Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. This week it is Halloween, and it is also a appropriately spooky full moon. So I am doing a full moon painting is going to be the feature, feature of the painting this week. I'm using my three standard brushes again as usual. Uh, so I have my big square brush, I have a medium sized brush, and then I also have a small pointed brush. Uh, the colors that I have here are black and white and then just an ultramarine blue and also a violet. Check the description box below for a more detailed materials list of everything that you'll need to paint along each week. This week I'm also so using my old trusty toothbrush here too for some splatter star action so that'll be fun we've not done that effect in a little while so pull out the uh, old toothbrush there hopefully you got that still uh, and let's go ahead and jump in we're gonna start with the background step today uh, and we're going to do a gradation from the top down we're going to use our largest brush for this and we're going to start with black this is just going to be regular old black no mixing required. I'm just going to do a stripe of black across the top part of my canvas. I don't want to go too far down with the black. Okay, so just one little back and forth stripe. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a pinch of white into my black and then also a pinch of blue. And this is going to create a really pretty like steely gray. And with that steely gray, I'm going to go right underneath the black. A Little bit of water is going to help my paint go nice and smooth and soak into the canvas texture nicely. And again, a little bit of white helps the opacity here. So not only does it help us start to move our way through our gradation, uh, but it also helps the paint not be see-through on the canvas. Okay, and it's okay if it looks a little bit stripy, that's totally fine. Let's add another pinch of white and another pinch of blue. And we're going to have a bluish gray now. Making sure I got the right color loaded up on my brush. A little bit of color variation uh, within the paint is totally fine. And now we're working our way down. You don't want to be too far down at this point, so make sure you're still up in the top part of your canvas and just back and forth and then up into the previous color okay very nice now you could go pretty far up and pretty far back down to get that real nice blend don't be afraid okay now i'm going to rinse my brush and i'm going to bring it to a pretty bright blue and I should be about half or about halfway down so this is going to be about the center of my canvas here horizontally speaking uh, and I'm going to take a little bit of blue and I don't want to do like just solid blue though so I am going to tone it down a bit with some black and white that looks pretty good maybe a little bit more vibrant okay all right very pretty, a little gray blue. And actually even more vibrant for me. I love bright colors. Whenever I do a painting that's not brightly colored, I'm like, what does this need? I feel like it needs rainbow colors. <laughs> Always, should, should all paintings be rainbow? <laughs> They just, I like the way that they look with the full spectrum. This is not a full spectrum. This is cool colors with a silhouette, which I still really like, but it is very bright. Always a little bit exaggerated and whimsical in the mind of Sky. Okay, and now we're about two thirds of the way down and I'm going to pretty much do the whole bottom part with purple. And again, I don't wanna be like too far down with this because we are gonna have a mountain here uh, with all of our trees. So if we went too far down with the blue, we're gonna just lose our purple. So make sure you can bring the purple up if you need to a little bit, but make sure that there is enough purple in your gradation here so that we'll see it 
later just because it's so pretty and in my opinion it is an important color for this painting. Just like the blue, I'm going to grab a little bit of black and white though and tone that color down. Just a little bit. The more gray you add, the less bright the color will be. Okay, nice purple. Kind of tone down ever so slightly grayish purple right underneath my blue, bringing it up into the blue. Very nice. Keeping my brush stroke all the way off the canvas here. And then I'm just going to grab a pinch of white, one more pinch of purple, making a lighter, slightly more vibrant, light purple. And I'm just going to end up seeing a little pinch of this. This is maybe the sunset. Beautiful purple color in the sunset just at the horizon line. So again, we're gonna have that big black hill covering most of this. All of our hard work, <laughs> uh, but it matters. We gotta work from the background forward, treating every layer with some tender love and care. Okay, that looks really good. Let's go ahead and step away and let this gradation dry for a little bit. And then we'll come back and we'll add a whole bunch more. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back. I have a dry background here, and I got some fresh colors for myself, although they are the same color that I started with. Uh, I just wanted it to be all neat and clean. <laughs> and then I only have a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of blue and purple, because we're not going to need very much of that. Now, before we get started on our main shapes, we're going to do one more background step, which is going to be the splatters, and we're going to use our toothbrush here, but let's take our medium brush with a little bit of water. We're actually going to create a little like subsection of white for ourselves with some water in it. So a nice watered down white. We're going to use that medium brush to mix the paint, but then you can go ahead and just take that brush and retire it and instead use your toothbrush and you can dip it in your little mix and then go crazy on your background and just a little flick of the finger and you're gonna get all kinds of good shapes and sizes which makes it look really natural like you spent forever making every little star <laughs> Don't want to do too much want to make sure our gradation is still nice and visible okay that looks great and now for our moon now uh anything in your house circular that will work uh, i'll go ahead and grab but i am using my tape my trusty tape like i always do this is just basic painters tape but any like dish or bowl will do if you don't have tape you're going to use this to place your moon. Now your moon can be anywhere you want, but I feel like I like to have mine just like a little bit off center. And then I'm going to use my tiniest, smallest brush here. And I can actually use the watered down white that I just made for myself because we're just going to do a little outline as delicately as we can around the outside of our tape or whatever our circular object may be. Perfect. Very nice. Okay, now I'm going to grab a bigger brush, which I need to rinse out slightly, to fill in my moon. Now we're not gonna get too technical yet. So this first step, we're just filling it in with white. Nothing too crazy. I know the moon can be a little bit intimidating. I painted my moon and at first I was like mm, I don't like it I don't know what does it need I don't know and then I stopped looking at it and I went to sleep and the next morning I woke up and I was like I think it's cute <laughs> uh, so it's a it's a tricky shape it's sort of like um doing like a rock formation is another weird natural shape well I guess it is kind of like a rock formation <laughs> Uh, but be gentle with yourself here and don't don't stress out. <laughs> Stay calm. If you are painting along today, uh, I have an art 
group on Facebook called the Art Club. And it is designed specifically for students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me on the weekends or, you know, from your own imagination or creativity or gallery or whatever you got going on. So I'd love to see your art. There's a link to join that in the description box below. Okay, I'm picking up a little bit of blue. That's actually not really a problem. I just want to keep those brush stroke shapes going in the direction of the circular shape. Okay, so there's like kind of like a median line here that I'm imagining that I'm going around. Now I already have a pretty good circular shape here, but what I'm actually going to do is take a little bit of gray. So just a tiny pinch of black in there. And on one side here, I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow. We already have that blue. Let's pull a little bit more blue in. A little bit more blue. Just ever so slightly. Just making it look circular. I'm gonna rinse my brush. Now I'm gonna add some craters. I'm gonna take a little bit of gray, a little bit of purple. I'm gonna go in first with this sort of purplish gray. And let's see, I'm just going to kind of scribble my brush around. And in some areas, I'm gonna kind of push down harder than others. And your moon doesn't need to look, honestly, like exactly like the moon. Like you don't need to individually place each crater. That's what I was saying earlier in that these shapes will grow on you. They're a little bit weird. Okay, getting some shadow in there. That looks pretty good. Let's see. I'm gonna pull a little bit of purple in, uh, kind of just for fun, like for the kind of Halloween bluish, blue moon, purple moon feel. Just a little bit. I don't wanna have too much color on my brush. I just think that adds a nice little something, something. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna take some clean white, as clean as I can find. And just kind of bring in some white there. So you're kind of playing with the colors. And adding some highlights back in. Here and there, like so. Giving it that blemished texture. Okay, that's enough. And then I'm gonna grab my tiny brush. And I'm gonna do two things. First one is I'm going to exaggerate that shadow that I created. And then I'm also sort of going over the original sketch line here, which I think makes it look a little bit cleaner. So it's kind of outlining it. It's like an outline shadow. You don't want to come back in here a million times and try to get a really perfect solid black line though. So I don't want to hesitate to call it an outline. And I'm not going to go all the way around. I've sort of messed up my circular shape slightly. Kind of trying to finesse that. Not too bad. <laughs> and then the same idea on the other side, if you want, I'm just going to clean up that side really quick with my tiny brush. And I just wanna bring that out to the sketch line just for the sake of tidiness and continuity within the painting. And maybe a little bit of texture over there too. Okay, that looks pretty good. And the other thing that I'm gonna do with my baby brush is here on the bottom, which is um, this very iconic moon crater that has, I guess what I would imagine is like blast lines. But I ask a scientist, I'm always challenging myself with the technical terms before my class. Like I should look up these things 
I don't think about that before I start. Um, so this is actually going to be right at the bottom, but like slightly off center. And these few little lines that kind of come up, I think really give the moon what feels like recognizability, our moon, and not just some fantasy moon. Okay, very subtle, but I think that makes a difference. And then I'm actually just going to darken that up slightly before moving on. Very, very slight amount of paint, not a lot of paint. Just a little baby whisper of a brush stroke. And there's actually a few craters like that on the moon. So if you want to do like a few others, that works too. Very, very tiny details. Not a lot. Okay. I'm going to let that be for now. Uh, and then I'm going to finish up my sky. So I'm going to actually use the end of my brush here rather than the front. I'm going to add a few bigger stars. It can be however big you'd like, but I feel like that adds a nice alternative texture with the stars, a little bit bigger than our splatter. Okay, that looks good. And now I'm gonna do a little star. So I'm gonna take my blue, I'm gonna mix it with white. I'm going to make a light blue for myself. That's perfect. Very pretty. Rolling that brush in the paint will help it come to a nice point. And then I'm going to kind of pick anywhere I'd like to add my little sparkly star. What you want to do is start with a, like a plus sign, like so. Very nice. A little bit Christmassy almost. North Star. And this wouldn't be the North Star. This might be Venus. Okay. And a little bit of white now on the inner part. So once we've done the blue. A little bit of white right on top of that same shape. It's going to give it a really good sparkly quality. How cute is that? Now I'm going to do a similar step with the light blue and from my star I'm just going to do a little trail. Very nice. And then also a little bit of white just at the front part. Look at how pretty that looks. Bring it out and adjust However you might need. There we go. Cute. Okay, and now for the silhouettes. Okay, let's grab our medium-sized brush because we got more space to fill in. And now I'm going to take just black. And I'm first going to create my little mountain. Kind of wiggle my way across the canvas here, gently sloping down. So this is maybe like the camera zoomed in on the top part of a mountain, right as the moon begins to crest over it. Very much something that you could see tonight here in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Which is why I was inspired to do this full moon painting tonight and commemorate this Halloween full moon event. Okay, and then I'm just filling it in with solid black. And then I'm going to grab my tiny brush for the trees. And these are trees that I've done in a few paintings. Very, very fun to add to things once you get them down. I'm going to start with a straight up and down line. Kind of start at the horizon line and pull up and then you'll get a nice little taper. And then from the top part, you're going to flick your brush down in either direction. 
creating your lovely little pine tree. And now it looks better if uh, it's a little bit thicker at the base here and you can kind of even make it solid black so that you don't even really see the see through. So you only see uh, more of the texture kind of towards the top part of the tree here. And then down here, a little bit more of just like, uh, you know, more shadow, more of the silhouette. Okay. And you're just going to build a little forest working your way across the mountain. It doesn't have to all be trees. So we're going to add a few bushes as well. Or maybe they're just different types of trees, probably. So these are probably uh, pines. I can't seem to, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're pines. Uh, if they go down like this, because redwoods, I'm pretty sure, have like up facing, like slightly different greenery. I can tell the difference in real life just from the wood, but sometimes when I'm painting, I don't know which one's which. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. I know the way they smell. <laughs> I love redwood forests. I think I think that's what we have here mostly but it's mixed so sometimes it's hard to tell okay and we are kind of working our way down uh gradually getting smaller with the trees like so and the ones that you have right in front of the moon are going to be the most important ones so you really want to be really gentle with your little flick of the wrist and then also very gentle with the lines that come up a little bit and that little area right there makes a big difference i think i'm gonna leave like a little space almost like a little peekaboo for the moon here i'm gonna do some other type of tree there later very nice You don't want it all too perfect either. So each tree, you want it to be a little bit random and loose. Little tiny flicks of the wrist. And this one is a test of patience. Little tiny flicks of the wrist. There we go, that's a big tree. It's a big one. I feel like Bob Ross right now. Little happy trees. He uses a different brush for his trees and a totally different technique. I think he's actually making redwoods when he does his technique. And I'm really curious to try it. I think I may need to buy myself one of those fan brushes. And if it goes well, I'll show you guys how to use it. And then we'll add more trees to our forest painting arsenal. Okay, and it can be however many pine trees that you like. I think I'm pretty much happy with the amount that I have. I think I'm gonna do maybe a few more over here as well. But they're going to get smaller. And that way I have kind of two little areas where there's gaps so that it's not one solid line. Although I think one solid line might look good as well. Not sure. Give it a try if you're brave and that's what you want to do. It's your painting so you get to make it however you like. I'm trying to be somewhat realistic and do a little bit of a varied forest for my Pacific Northwest moonrise. Okay, that's looking really cute. I'm feeling it. We're almost done, everyone. A little almost Christmas tree-like. however many you like. And then, like I said, we're gonna add 
maybe like the suggestion of some other trees with just like some scribbly texture here or maybe that's bushes the way that the forests grow here is they're so thick so there's usually quite a bit of undergrowth and then the big old trees which is uh, very flammable we've all learned unfortunately but we love our forests here and i do hope we find good ways to preserve them in coming years they are very important to me and so many others that live here in the Pacific Northwest and all over. Okay. How cute is that? I'm really feeling it. I think it looks really great. Uh, I had a lot of fun teaching today's painting. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments section below. And that is all I have for you guys today. Love to see you over in the art club. And until next time, stay creative.